Okay, so tonight we're talking about objections first. And Trish, do you want to uh, talk about that first? Sure. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, you know, you're supposed to be um, going out, talking to people, new people every day to um, keep your business going. And the more people you talk to, the more um, create. Sorry, there's like a helicopter going over. <laughs> I'll just wait. I can't even hear. Okay. Um, the more people that you talk to, the more creative excuses and um, objections you're going to come across. So just going into it, you have to just expect that you're going to be told no. You're going to be told all kinds of crazy reasons why they want to say no. Um, so just not letting yourself take any of it personally and just um, having some little tools in your back pocket that you can, you know, pull out to try to navigate these objections will kind of help you through it. Um, so I'm gonna just go over some of the top ones that we uh, normally hear. And um, if there's any specific ones that you guys have, are being told, then we can um, address those also. But the the first one, the one that, um, you know, is like the most common is people saying, um, let me just close my door, sorry, hold on. <laughs> what happens when you live near LA, <laughs> the cops are, Line around. Okay. Um, so anyway, the first, uh, the most common objection is the no money. Uh, that's too expensive. You know, I don't have enough for that right now. Maybe next month. I don't have, you know, the, the money one, right? So um, a lot of times that's the first question people will ask when you start mentioning anything about it. They'll be like, oh, how much does it cost? How much is it? And if you're responding right away with, oh, it's $180 or $160, um, you know, without figuring out any of their goals or without figuring out, you know, anything about them, and you're just telling them the price right up front, then um, that's gonna be the first thing that they say is, oh, I don't have money for that. Because they, to them, it's not of any value yet. You haven't shown them the value of a $140, $160 challenge pack. So, you know, to them to see that number right off the uh, up front is, you know, immediately gonna be a no. So, um, we, we, went bef we went over before how to explain the value of the challenge pack going over everything that it has with it. Um, explaining the value of Shakeology and all that. Cost, don't think that you have to answer that specific question. You can um, answer by saying, oh, it just depends on, you know, which program you get or what your needs are. So let's talk about your goals so that we can figure out which one's the best for you. Something like that. So that you're like kind of evading um, and telling them the price like right up front. Um, and so you really want to like get them to say yes or like really feel that they're interested um, maybe even multiple times before you give them that price out, you know, or uh, like see how they're connecting with you by telling you their goals or like really saying, oh, I really, um, I'm trying to hit this goal or I've been struggling with this for however long or whatever. So, um, you know, if you, and then if you're like along the way asking like, oh, you know, I have this awesome challenge group because I always fell off track in the past and my challenge accountability support group is what really keeps me motivated. Does that sound like something that would benefit you? Yes. You know, and then they you talk about the nutrition plan. Oh, I always, you know, use, you know, to have these cravings or whatever. I mean, if you like are telling them the, the value of the challenge pack and then you're asking them like, oh, does that sound like it would work for you or something like that? Um, and getting them to say yes more than one time it's a little bit more likely that when when they do see that price that you know to them you've shown them the value so it's going to be um a little bit easier for them to be comfortable with that um also if it's a money issue and you know you feel like they're really committed but they just you know seriously genuinely do have a money issue maybe it's someone that you know personally um or you know someone that's been following you for a couple months and so you know they're interested but maybe it is honestly a money issue then you can always um offer them that gift back you know you can't tell them i want to refund or discount the price of your challenge pack but you could say oh you know i can offer you a 10 20 dollar 40 dollar gift back in the form of whatever it could be um the fix eight cookbook or you know an Amazon gift card or whatever you choose to do. But you know, when they order the challenge pack, you're going to get a $40 commission. So you have that to kind of wiggle with and play with. And personally for me, like in the beginning of the month, when I know I have the rest of the month to hit success club, I might 
offer the 10 or $20 range. But if I'm at the end of the month trying to hit success club, I'll come right out front to and say like, Oh, I can give you a, a $40, whatever back if I need to hit success club. Um, so don't be scared to give the gift back, you know? Um, and you know, even if you are giving them back that whole commission, you're still going to be, um, you know, having them hopefully as a repeat Shakeology customer, as a potential coach in the future, you know, someone on your team that's going to motivate you. So you're getting something back from them. You don't have to just think about, well, I'm losing my $40 commission. Why am I even, you know, doing this? So um, that's that. Um, you could always, you, know, you could fall back. Well, I'm not even going to say that because that's, I'm not going to say that. Um, <laughs> at the very least, you know, if someone just has no money for the challenge pack, they can, um, you know, start out with the Beachbody On Demand, which is um, kind of, it seems like they're really working on improving that recently. Um, and so for $2.99 a week, um, and they get a, fr a free 30 days trial for one thing, free 30 day trial. And then for $2.99 a week, after that, they have Beachbody On Demand, which gives them access to, you know, all the um, all the exercises. So if they're not even willing to do the 2.99 a week, you know, with especially with the free 30 day thing, then you know you're kind of maybe wasting your time. Maybe they just need to be in your free group and you know talk to them a little bit later about the challenge pack. So um, money is the big one. You know, people talk about not having money all the time, but you know, honestly, like you know, I say I don't have money, and then I go to Target and spend 200 bucks on random crap that I don't need. You know. So you know, people like if you if you really want something like you'll find a way to make it work. You know, I've seen I've had people um, sell things on Craigslist so they could get their challenge pack. You know, you know, have a yard sale, just you know, save their money for two months. You know, siphon away twenty bucks here and there. You know, if if it's somebody really has you know like a strong goal, which is your job to find out what that goal is, what their reason for wanting to do this is, then um, you know they should, you know, should be able to find a way to afford the challenge pack. Um, let's see. So another objection. So I already go to the gym. Well, I, I had a planet fitness membership. Actually, I probably still do that. I haven't canceled, but you know, like I haven't been for like two years. So, you know, a lot of people have a gym membership that they'll say, Oh, I have a gym membership already. So I'm like committed to that. But you know, are they actually going to the gym, you know, or, um, which was my thing. I had the membership, but I didn't never go. Or if they're going, you know, are they getting a, a, the best out of their workout? You know, they're not getting probably one-on-one um, -on -one time with a, a personal trainer um, that they could be getting, you know, from the Beachbody program. And knowing that they can have the Beachbody on demand and stream it right from their phone right there in the gym. So even if they don't have workout equipment at home, but they like using the gym. I know Greg uses the gym you know, goes to the gym just for a change of scenery or whatever his reasons are too. Um, so, you know, they can take their phone and stream their workout right there in the gym and use the equipment there. So um, that's not really an excuse to not do um, a, a beach body program. And a lot of times, you know, in the gym, it's like, you know, do you have a good workout buddy that goes with you all the time? Or, you know, maybe the workout group would still benefit them, you know, as far as motivation to keep going to the gym um, and the nutrition aspect is, doesn't really come into play when you're talking about the gym. So, um, there's still benefits, even if somebody goes to the gym consistently that they could, um, get from, um, having a program. So, uh, a lot of times, let's see, um, uh, I don't do shakes. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, I don't like shakes. I don't do shakes, you know, too powdery, you know, there's a thousand different reasons. Um, people tell me, oh, I want to try this GMC shake, um, you know, and this Nutrisystem shake, you know, all the other brands people are wanting to try. Oh, and then they'll, I'll check back with them later and they'll say, oh, that one, that didn't work. Oh, I didn't, that was disgusting. I couldn't drink it. I was the same way before Shakeology. I couldn't choke down um, a protein shake to save my life. Like I literally had a shake once where I like tried to chug it down and I immediately threw it back up. So um, like I, I really relate to that. I don't do shakes thing because that, that was me. And, um, you know, honestly, Shakeology, you know, I've been drinking it for the past 10 months consistently. So, um, by me doing that for myself and knowing that it's worked and knowing that I've seen the energy changes and look, there goes Greg. <laughs> um, and you know, 
knowing the energy changes that I've seen, the um, craving control that it's helped me with, I have, you know, things that I can talk about with them specifically about the shake. Like if you're not being a product of the product and drinking the shake, um, you know, or even like I've given samples to my sister, my mom, and they've, you know, seen results and changes just by doing like a week long trial for me. So, you know, I have other people that I can talk about like, oh, my, this person has um, celiac disease and it's done this for them, or this person has Crohn's disease or whatever, you know, intestinal issue. Um, and it's helped them if, you know, people come back and say, oh, I don't do shakes because I have, uh, you know, a high blood or high blood sugar and, you know it's probably has too much sugar in it or whatever. Like people have all kinds of excuses, but um, just knowing your own personal experience with it. And um, the fact that Shakeology has so many different flavors, it has vegan ones there uh, with each flavor, you know, you can have a thousand different recipes, you know, you can find recipes that are thicker, thinner, you know, depending on what they like. So, um, you know, you can just ask, tell them like, well, would you just give it a try, you know, and talk about how that, there's a bottom of the bag um, guarantee. So even if they drink the whole bag um, and they say they don't like it or they're not seeing any results, then, um, you know, they could get, get their full refund. So um, I even say like when I'm talking about that, it's like if Beachbody is that confident that they could, they would offer giving a full refund for even somebody who's drank the whole bag, you know, that's, they're pretty confident to thinking that, you know, if somebody's drank the whole bag, they're going to, see the results and they're going to love it. So, um, that's kind of how I combat the shake one. Let's see. Um, workouts too intense. Um, you know, a lot of people have injuries or specific things, you know, that they can't do, uh, limitations that they have. So, um, you know, for every program that's out there, there's a modifier in the program or, you know, a way that you just can modify the program each exercise, depending on which ones you can or can't do, um, you just, you know, modify it so that you can do it. Um, but I feel like they're really good at focusing on the modifier um, throughout the all the ones that I've done. There's always the modifier right there. And, you know, if you can't jump, then you just lift your leg up or, you know, like whatever. And that's kind of your job to help figure out exactly what, you know, what they couldn't do and maybe recommend, you know, a way that you've been able to modify this or that. Um, I know when I started, I started with 21 day fix extreme and I was in no extreme, um, fitness condition at all. So, um, you know, I was modifying the modifier for like the first two months of my workout program. So, you know, if sometimes people like I've had people say like, Oh, I don't like, I don't want to do that. Cause I, I see all them on there and they're doing so good. And I like, you know, it makes me feel bad that I'm not like already at their level. Well, you know, it's like you have to, that's kind of like a personal development thing that you can work with them on, you know, self-confidence, just getting started kind of thing. So, um, you know, like I said, I started modifying the modifier and then I was able to do the modifier ones. And then finally I was able to do the regular one. So that's like, um, um, a step ladder that you can kind of use to gauge your progress through the thing. So, um, just more encouragement is what they need and the validation that it's okay to not be able to do, you know, 100% from day one, um, you know, you could tell them someone on my team puked on the first day of her workout and threw me right under the bus and, you know, and say, and she's stuck with it for 10 months. So, um, so not right now, maybe next month, um, you know, you can, you know, you kind of have to dig a little deeper in that to see if it's a financial reason or maybe they're moving or something's going on in their life. That's just not, you know, helping them out. Um, they're not going to make them be able to do it this month, but you know, figure out what the reason is and then you'll be able to, you know, say, Oh, well, can I, what would be a good day to check back with you? Or can I check back with you on this day, you know, this day, or, um, you know, maybe a follow up is better. Um, uh, let's see. I need to talk to my spouse is my favorite one to hate because, um, you know, usually when they say I need to talk to my spouse, that's just like, they're easy out. Like they're like, Oh, I just need to, you know, use him as my excuse. But, um, you know, I love to tell, you know, especially women, you know, like, are you really going to let, you know, him dictate how you feel about yourself, you know? And so if they say that, um, I don't know. I kind of get a little defensive when, when people tell me that, cause I, it kind of really pisses me off to hear, you know, that someone's going to let their husband or somebody else control, you know, their own health and feeling good about themselves for whatever reason. Maybe they're, 
you know, I don't know, but usually it's just like a way, a way out. So you got to just kind of work a, a lot of these objections. You have to just, you know, try and make sure that you're figuring out what they're, how would they, they benefit from doing the workout program from having a, you know, these physical changes from changing their diet, you know, maybe um, they have kids and they, you know, the energy would be, you know, so beneficial for them or whatever specifically for their life. Um, you know, you have to see, like, maybe you can see how they would benefit, but you got to kind of help them see what the benefits will be and, um, you know, figure out what their specific goals are. Maybe they have a cruise coming up or something like that. And so you can kind of use these life things to help you, um, you know, motivate them. Uh, because that's like the hardest part getting started is just getting self-motivated and your body just like freaks out and goes through all these objections that you just want to throw out there to try and justify to yourself why you don't want to get started. But you know, if Greg hadn't harassed me month after month, then I probably wouldn't have gotten started. So, you know, I say harassment, but it's, it's really, you know, encouraging and motivating them to figure out what their goals are so that they can um, feel confident enough to even take that first step. Um, another one here, a couple more, I prefer live group workouts. You know, some people like doing those Zumba classes and things like that. Well, they do have some, you know, like size live and like certain things like that. Um, but you know, the live group workouts, I haven't really heard that one too much, but, um, you know, they do have certain programs like the size one, you know, that are, that are fun and dancey and jumping around, or, you know, if they have a friend that they could work out with, then, you know, sometimes they do have like you know, small communities, or not small communities, um, um, like at the, the rec centers or the Y or certain things, they will have beach body ones. Um, but, you know, the live group workouts for, for me personally, it's like, um, you know, they're fun to go to, but are you consistent with going out of your house? You know, sometimes it's more convenient to, to have something that you can access right away. And so a lot of times the, the, the live group workouts are like a good thing to, to complement the beach body workout. So you could do those, you know, just like the people that like to go to the gym, sometimes they can do the at home or at the gym. Some people like to do, could do, you know, the ones in their house or the live group workouts kind of like flip flop back and forth. So just as another option, um, let's see, do you guys have any, um, that you've heard so far that I haven't gone over any objections that you guys have been told? Mm -hmm. Are you talking to three to five people a day? Are you not getting any objections? What are you guys talking about then? So I can try that trick. <laughs> so like if you get the technical ones, like um, how does how does this work out compare to CrossFit or how does this compare to Jillian Michaels, whatever, you know, um, those <clears throat> or how does this shake, you know, uh, compared to Shakeology, right? Any of those technical questions that you don't know the answer to, um, just all you have to do is say, I don't know about that. You know, I don't know about Plexus. All I know is I have been, you know, story. You know, all I know is story, you know. So you need to have your story or other stories that you can tell, you know? So I don't know about CrossFit. All I know is I did P90X and I lost 40 pounds and I did it in my own living room in 90 days. Simple, you know? I don't know about Plexus. All I know is I drank Shakeology and in six, after six months, I got off blood pressure medication. I lowered my cholesterol. You know, I lost weight and whatever, you know, and that's the stories that you want to tell, right? Because mm -hmm. that's going to combat pretty much any objection that they come up with. So, or if they have an objection and you just have no idea how to respond, that's what, you know, we have group chats um, or just, you know, in our Facebook groups, our team groups that you can just go to and post whatever your issue is and you'll get 10 responses pretty quick of how someone has overcome that same objection. And if you don't have the story to use yourself, you know, maybe if someone, you know, like would be, maybe it's another nurse and it's, um, you know, you'd be like, well, I don't know about this, but my, my coaching buddy, who's a nurse, you know, 
has been drinking Shakeology for 10 months. She works night shift and she has like the most energy. She's the most awake one, you know, on her unit now because she's drinking Shakeology and whatever, you know, like you can just reach out to the team mm -hmm. with your exact um, objection and issue and 10 people right away are going to respond and give you suggestions on how to, um, how to answer that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, okay, if no other objection cases, let's talk about uh, the fear of failure, right? So, um, you know, we all have setbacks and failures. It doesn't matter if you're a new coach or, you know, if you've been a coach for five years like me, okay? I mean, I run into failures all the time. And uh, my failures are just bigger, a lot bigger than your failures. <laughs> but I still have failures, okay? I mean, it's like... Don't minimize their failures. They're I'm, important. I'm not minimizing. Um, <laughs> but it's like, you know, when I drop rank, it's like I drop, you know, three ranks at a time, you know? And, you know, I lose out on hundreds or, you know, of dollars, potentially. So it's, it's big. But... um. But things that you're going to get, you know, because I, I know because I've gone through this and I've talked to a lot of coaches, but something that you're going to struggle with is comparison because you're going to see coaches that started at the same time as you um, who are killing this business. And you're going to be like, why aren't I killing this business? You know, um, like Trish came in and she, you know, shot up you know, to Emerald within 30 days and she went diamond within like four months. So, you know, a lot of coaches will look at her and say, you know, well, what, you know, why can't I do that? You know, I must not be good at this business, but that's not true because you just don't know what Trish is doing behind the scenes. You know, it's like, you don't know how many people she's talking to. Like, you, know, you don't know like how many free groups she's running and you know busting her ass and how many hours she's putting in and into it right um so you, you really can't compare yourself you know just because you started at the same time or somebody started after you and and they're taking off you know don't worry about it you know you you know why you got into coaching you're you're the one who knows your why you're the one who knows your goals and you just have to run at your own you know you have to go at your own pace and you have to be real with yourselves because you have to Adrian. say hey well I'm not hitting success club I'm not ranking it advancing well be real with yourself how many people like Trish said how many people are you talking to a day are you talking to three to five people a day are you talking to 50 to 100 people a month new people you know are you following up with people every single day if you're not then yeah I mean don't expect, you know, <laughs> because if you, if you want to expect to, to really take off in this business and really be successful, you've got to be doing those activities. That's why they call them the three vital behaviors, because they're vital to the success in your business. If you're not bringing in new friends all the time, constantly, I mean, I bring in probably at least 100 friends a month, new people that I don't know and like become friends with and start conversations with. I would say that's probably low, really low. Um, but, um, you know, and then how many are you inviting to sneak peeks and how many are you inviting to your free group, you know, and things like that. So those are the things that you have to look at and you have to track and you have to measure, you know, if, if you really want to work the business now, you know, if you just want to do it as a hobby, if you just want to, you know, uh, get in, uh, you know, a little extra money or a discount. Cool. You know, none of that's required. I just want to set the real, real expectations because I don't want you to quit because you think that you're not good at this or this is not, you know, is not, you're not cut out for this or whatever, you know? So just set your expectations like, Hey, I'm only in this as a hobby. I'm only in this for the discount. Cool. Well, you're getting it, you know, as long as you stick with your fitness and you don't give up on yourself, this is a good business to be in, right? 
because you are saving 25% and you're keeping yourself accountable and you're keeping yourself on track. So you cannot fail. You cannot, you know, it, it's still worth it to be a coach, right? Now, if you want to advance and earn money and, you know, become a diamond, you know, then that's when you have to be real with yourself and say, am I willing to put in the work? You know, am I willing to add a hundred friends a month? Am I willing to run a free group every single month? You know, am I willing to invite 50 people to my challenge group? Okay. So, you know, and I hope you are because I hope, I definitely want all of you to become business builders, become financially free. And I would love to see you all walk across the stage at summit someday, because I can tell you it's, it's been the best thing that I've ever done in my life, you know? And if you would have told me five years ago that I would be this type of person, <laughs> you know, I would have never thought it was possible. So, you know, you just have to be willing to, to, to work at it, you know, and willing to put yourself out there and willing to overcome your fear. So another thing that people will struggle with is unsupportive family. So I, I'm lucky I, I have a very supportive wife, um, but a lot of people, especially, unfortunately, husbands who aren't in the business will be unsupportive of their wives who are in this business, okay? And it's, a lot of times it's like jealousy or, you know, it may be jealous of, of their time, like, cause you're spending time with us, right? Instead of cooking their dinner or sitting and watching TV with them or, or, or you're working out and you're losing weight and you're getting in shape. And so they become jealous and they think, oh, you know, you're just looking for, a, a, you know, another spouse to replace me or something like that. And really that's, that's not the case, right? I mean, if your spouse is feeling that way and being unsupportive, it's, you probably just need to talk to them and tell them your why, you know, and then explain to them, you know, it's like, you know, being, t tell them why you love being a coach. Hey, this gives me a purpose. This allows me to help people. You know, this allows me to feel good about myself. You know, this allows me to earn some extra money. And, you know, hey, my end goal is to be able to bring myself home from work so I'm not having to work when I'm 60 years old, you know? And that, this spouse is going to understand. You know, if you bring them on board and you, and you get them, you know, on the same page and, and bring them to events and stuff so that they can see what this is all about. I've heard so many stories about spouses who have changed just by bringing them to an event. Now, an event could be a Super Saturday. Now, Super Saturdays happen every quarter and you guys need to go to Super Saturday, okay? The next one is August 6th. So, write that down. Go into the coach online office and under training events, Super Saturday, you can find a Super Saturday near you, okay? And what I would recommend is um, if you've got like two or three that are, and when I say near, I mean like a couple hour drive, you know? Look at all the ones that are within a couple hour drive of you and like typically they'll give a link, right? Go check out the links. Is it in somebody's house, like in their living room? I would look for another one, you know? Um, look for the biggest one you can find because there are big Super Saturdays, huge events, which are like little mini summits that go on all over the country. I run the DC Super Saturday and we have, you know, like 1,000, 1,200 coaches that come. We bring in top speakers. Um, this year we've had Tony Horton and Autumn Calabrese and Carl and Jeff Hill and all these names that you've, you've heard of or seen. Um, they're the ones that come to our Super Saturdays. And if you can get a spouse to one of those, it could be, it could totally change their mindset. Then Summit, uh, Success Club Trip, uh, you know, there's so many different events that you can get them to. So, and, but most importantly, get yourself to events. Okay. Um, so, or you can make it do like I do and use that as an excuse to take a vacation. And I, in January, I flew out to Greg's in DC and then I'm flying back out to his in August. Um, and everything is tax deductible cause it's a business trip, you know, um, 
you know, and any chance I get to travel, I will travel. So, yep. um, I got yep. to see autumn by going out to the DC super Saturday and I have plenty, I live right here in LA. So there's plenty around here. I've been to some in Huntington beach. I went up Jason Wagner's on our team. I went up to his last time. So, you know, I just kind of use it as an, a nice excuse to take a road trip you know, grab a couple buddies. They don't have to be beach body coaches at all. You could just bring whoever you drag in off the street, you know, um, can come with you. And it's like really positive motivation. Like everybody there is like, um, you know, like really high energy, like excited and like positive minded and in this for the same reasons that you are. So, um, the super Saturday was like the first time I like went out and saw, you know, like I had been seeing doing these web things and like seeing everybody through the computer and going to the, my first super Saturday was like the first time I saw like other beach body coaches face to face. And it really like makes it more concrete and real that they're like, these are real people and it's not like a scam. This is like a real community of people and culture of people. So, um, yeah, definitely go super Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, the other thing that's, that will make you feel like a failure is getting told no. And um, there's a book uh, called Go For No, which is a great book. You can look it up on Amazon. I forget the author. Do you know, Trish? Um, no, but if you say Go For No, that's all you need. Yeah. Um, so it talks about, oh, somebody said. Oh, there we go. What's that? Oh, good. Question, yeah. where can I find 100 new friends? Oh, Phil? <laughs> uh, he sent me a private message. Oh. Uh, okay, um, one thing that I will, uh, that I talked about last week, I think, or social media, were you at our social media call last week? We talked I about- No. Okay, you need to watch that webinar. Okay. Not webinar, but you know, that, that call, that video call. And I can send you the link or Brian can or whatever. Um, of the recording, but we talked about how to expand your warm market, how to find more friends on Facebook, how to start a like page, and how to, I do Facebook advertising, I bring, I bring in people that way, okay? Okay. Um, but you can also join groups and friends of friends and graph searches, and there's, we talked about so many different ways, so definitely listen to that call. Great, thank you. Okay, so the go for no, um, basically it, it's just a book that teaches you to how to overcome no and it tells you to like look forward to no. Like instead of looking forward to a yes, you want to look forward to a no, right? Because then you can go on to the next one because you're setting yourself goals of like how many no's can I get? Instead of, you know, instead of I have to hit success club 10, you know, or five, that means that I have to get three yeses you look at it a different way and you know my goal for the month is to get 100 notes so you know that way if i get if i ask 10 people and i get three yeses i don't stop right yeah. continue on until i get 100 notes you know so you know and and don't worry about getting no because we all get told no i mean seriously i'll i will ask 100 people and 90 5% of them will tell me no or not right now or some other excuse. That's okay. Um, one thing that um, I don't know if you guys listened to the national wake up call. If you today, did you guys listen to that with Nikki Johnson? Okay. If you didn't, you can, you can, uh, it's already on podcast. You can download it, listen to it. You know, just as a suggestion, I, I always listened to the podcast, the National Wake Up Call and other podcasts, other uh, team calls like this and stuff on my way to work. So if you have, you know, a 30 minute commute to work, you download them to your phone or, you know, podcast you get on your phone and just listen, you know, if you uh, are doing any other, you know, type of mindless um, thing like cooking, cleaning, laundry, pop in the headphones, you know? Um, oh, I thought you were going to say, let someone else do that. <laughs> no, no, you can do that uh, too, but, um, you know, any type of thing where your mind is not busy, but your hands are right. Like driving, I cycle a lot. So, you know, that gives me plenty of time to listen, but, um, yeah, so think of opportunities, like when you're in the shower, when you're putting on your makeup, that you can listen to things like the National Wake Up Call. So you have no, no excuse not to be listening every single week and not to be, um, you know, doing other type of calls, you know. 
or other types of videos. So I know like when Trish started out and one of the reasons that she took off, right, is because she just like started following a lot of the top coaches and started looking them up on their YouTube channels and started like watching their videos, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So instead of like comparing, like you talked about earlier and being like, oh man, she like went to Diamond in four months. Well, I saw somebody else do that and like saw a YouTube thing that was like how to go to Diamond in 11 days. And I was like, oh, that's possible. Let me figure out how. And I watched 10 videos that different coaches had posted about, you know, how to go Diamond in two weeks or 30 days or like, you know, there's thousands of different ones. So, um, you know, instead of comparing yourself, you use that as like motivation and you know, personal development to figure out how you can do that for yourself. Um, it, yeah, and whenever you hear um, these top coaches on on the calls, right, and Carl talk about them, um, you know, like you just heard Nikki Johnson, you know, go follow her, you know, follow her, look up her um, on, uh, you know, YouTube. And, you know, as you discover more, like Melanie Mitro and, you know, of the top five, the top 10, you can look up, you know, them on YouTube and on Facebook and you can kind of start stalking them, but they have so many videos. I mean, every coach has so many videos um, on every single topic. So, you know, if you want to know like, What's their secret? How are they doing it? What, you know, oh, they're, they're killing it with Instagram. How are they doing it? I guarantee you, you just search on YouTube and you'll find 500 videos of them talking to their team on how exactly they're doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and Scotty, Scotty Hobbs is like one of my favorite. I don't know if, any, if y'all have ever seen Scotty Hobbs. Um, he was like one of the ones I've been following from the beginning and he's so motivational and just like the way he talks, I don't know. So if you haven't seen any Scotty Hobbs, videos then go stalk him later tonight he's really good yeah i i, I love scotty too he's I've, I've tried to get him like on our team calls and stuff and, and, and like out to super saturday he's just a very private you know kind of i think introverted person so mm -hmm. i've been unsuccessful but he does great videos and you can definitely watch all of his videos so mm-hmm um, and I was going to say, too, you talked about unsupportive spouses, but um, a lot of times your friends, too, are going to be um, seeing you go through this change, seeing you, like, bettering yourself and either for their own whatever reasons, like, they're not ready to make those changes for themselves. And they're going to be jealous that you're like, oh, Trish used to go drinking with me every, you know, three times a week. And now she's, you know, working out and drinking psychology. She's not drinking alcohol. Like, what the hell? My friend's like, you know, MIA. And so it's kind of like, um, you know, you're going to kind of see like a little bit of a change in some of some of your closest friends who are who are maybe going to, you know, be a little bit either jealous or just, you know, for whatever the reason is, you know, you're making this change in your life or you're like doing the business um, and, you know, people don't understand it or they just have their own things going on. And so um, and and family members do the same thing. So, um, you know, some family members you wish, you know, were, would support you like your spouse or your parent or your sister or whatever. But, you know, you have to just know what your why is and focus on what you're, you're supposed to be doing and kind of just let everyone else's opinion and, you know, how they affect you just kind of like, you know, go away. And um, a lot of the personal development that I've read, you know, really talks about how you're kind of like the sum of, well, the average of like your five closest friends, you know, so like maybe my five closest friends a year ago, you know, were kind of maybe keeping me down or like had negative mindsets or did certain things that, you know, weren't conducive to like a successful business, um, you know, and you kind of have to, you know, not cut people off, but just focus on the, the five people that are going to help you advance and help you be more positive and stick with, uh, like be aligned with your goals. And it'll kind of be like a natural change, but you know, sometimes it's, it, for, you know, for certain friends, it could be a little more dr dramatic. So just, you know, if you're coming up with like, you know, these personal conflicts where you're thinking like, oh, I feel guilty because I'm not spending this time like I used to with this, you know, they're probably a really good friend, but they just aren't where you are. And you're, you know, some people you have to just let go and some you can motivate to bring on the journey with you, you know, if it's right for them. But um, friends, family, you know, everybody uh, can have you feeling those unsupportive vibes. Um, yeah. Um, 
the other one that that I'll talk about is um, life events. So life is going to continue to happen, okay? And consistency is key in this business. And you, you know, life uh, problems are going to come up. Like your car is going to break down. You know, you might get sick, or a loved one might get sick, or or I mean, anything could happen, right? You you have to move. You lose your job. Whatever you know, don't let life allow you to put this on the back burner, okay? Like, if this is a priority, and, you know, if you treat this like a business, if you treat this like, you know, the opportunity that it is, you know, because it's more important than your job, <laughs> really. I mean, because let's say your, your car broke down or whatever, you, you know, your, your spouse, you know, goes in the hospital. You, you might take a little time, to, to be with them, right? To, you, you might take a few days off work, but I guarantee you, you're not gonna take, you know, a year off of work, right? Because you have to go to that job. You have to continue to make money, right? Um, you know, it, it's like you, you have responsibilities, right? Well, if you're coaching people, if you're running free groups, you know, if you're mentoring coaches, you have a responsibility and you're working on your fortune, right? You're working on this amazing opportunity, this business that you have, which can pay you so much more than that job. You know, that job you hate that you're working, you know, 40, 50 hours a week that's going to give you a 2% raise at the end of the year. You're more dedicated to that than you are to this business. Because I see this all the time. Trish, I know you see this all the time too. As soon as something comes up, the business is the first thing to go. The coaching business is the first thing to go, you know? And you guys just can't, if you wanna be successful, I'm telling you, you cannot let that happen. You have to continue to check in with your groups every day. You have to continue to mentor your coaches. You have to continue to be there for your customers who are counting on you. You have to continue to invite, you know, you have to continue to strive to hit that success club regardless of what life throws at you. You know, treat it at least as good as you treat your job. <laughs> so if you do that, you will not fail at this business, you know. And we talked about, you know, like if you were to invest in any other business, you know, how much of an investment you would make and how much would be on the line financially, especially, you know. And, you know, Beachbody has kind of put you at a disadvantage because you're only investing, you know, whatever you paid for your challenge pack and your monthly measly $15 coaching fee you know, like you're not investing that much. So you kind of like, you can allow yourself to not take it as seriously. But like Greg said, it's more important than, you know, your job or, or these other things that you're letting take priority um, because of the outcome that it can give for you. So um, um, one of the things Greg talked about one time was tell him about how you have to give yourself a stick or hit yourself with a stick or do something with a stick, like give yourself like a, uh, you know, a thing, like if you're, if something's going to come up and you know, it's going to come up or, you know, you're that type of person that if something comes up, you're going to let yourself, you know, throw the business away. Even if it's something that you really want, you know, let yourself give yourself the goals of like, Oh, if I'm not diamond by August, then I'm going to donate, you know, a thousand dollars to, you know, Donald Trump or, you know, somebody that's you know, something that's like, something that you would never do, you know, um, you know, I don't know, something like that where you can kind of like give yourself more of a financial motivation to hit these goals since you don't have that financial $40,000, $100,000, you know, loan taken out from the bank, you know, you can give yourself, it doesn't have to be $1,000, it could be $50, something that you really, the sports team that you really hate or, you know, whatever, something that would kind of like put a fire under yourself to, to stick, stay on track. Yeah. It's like the, the stick and the carrot, right? So if, if you need extra motivation to hit a goal, right? Like if, if you want to be, I, I hear this all the time, coaches say, I want to be diamond by summit, or I want to be a diamond. I, you know, I want to be a diamond by the end of the year. I'm like, if you're serious, then give yourself a, a carrot and a stick, you know, what reward are you going to give yourself you know commit to it put it on paper you know stick it on your computer what reward are you going to give yourself if you become a diamond by that date and if you don't 
what consequence are you going to give yourself? Now, that, and that's what Trish was talking about, you know, that stick of what would be very painful for you? You know, if it's giving $50 to, you know, the Democratic caucus or to the Trump rally or, you know, you know, what would really cause you pain? Or, you know, if you are a Redskins fan and, you know, you, uh, your stick would be you have to go to a Dallas game, sit on the 50-yard line, and get one of those big fingers, you know, of I love Dallas, and you, you would have to wave that, you know. That would be your consequence. So, you know, it, that, that's, that was just a technique for if you want to seriously push yourself in this business, then, you know, come up with rewards and sticks. That's what I was saying on one of our other calls. So uh, we only have a couple minutes left. Does anybody have any questions before we wrap up? Okay. I have a question, but it's really not on the objections. It's on something else. Should I post it in the group or can I ask it here? Or? Yeah, go ahead. We have a couple minutes. Okay, so like um, on a private group, my free challenge, I'm having a real hard time getting a photo to post to the group with fitting properly like in Facebook yes yes like when you're like I'm trying to do my free fitness group and the graphic that I'm using um, looks okay when I'm creating it but when I post it to my um, private group part of it is showing and you know it's I, I don't think I have the ratio right and you I'm mean just the banner wondering. yes the banner thank you what are you using to create it I used Canva today. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, Canva or PicMonkey, um, because it gives you the banner proportions, right? Um, yeah, actually I have PicMonkey pulled up. I can show you real quick. Okay, so, um, oh, everybody see my beautiful children? Um, <laughs> hold on a second. Okay, oh shoot, where'd it go? Sorry, okay. So if, I don't, and I've never used Canva or else I would show you how to do it on that one. But like, um, if you go to pickmonkey.com and then you just play with these little ones up at the top, if you do, um, design and then you come to, um, is it, oh no, actually it's the collage. Hold on. I usually do collage when I'm making my banner. Um, I don't know. And then, um, when you come to this little, like it, it took me to my, it wanted me to choose pictures that I want to put on my collage. So you'll do that first. And then you go right here to Facebook cover and then you can choose, you know, if you want how many pictures you want or whatever, but this is like automatically the right size for your banner. I think you can also select Facebook banner from design, right? If you go back, go back, right? From out here? Oh, from design? Yeah, yeah, right there. Whoa. From the size? No, no, go, go back. You did it too fast. Oh, I didn't do anything. Okay. Click on design. Oh, and then from here. Facebook oh, okay. Cover. Well, you're, see, that's why Greg was in IT for 20 years, because he knows <laughs> the ins and outs. Yeah, perfect. So right there. Canva probably has a similar thing, where you just have to find the right ratio. Okay, and you can use PicMonkey without doing the free trial on the login. Is that what you're doing? You're just... Yeah, I never, like, this, it kind of confused me at the beginning because I was, like, scrolling around trying to do all this crap, but I, you only ever, like, do these icons. Well, this is how I do it, um, you know, and then I didn't even, like, see Greg show me this. Like, I never even looked past those four icons, so, like, I never even saw this right here. So, um, but, yeah, if you do that, you don't have, you can just go to PicMonkey.com hover over this, do this, and then, you know, this way you can design it. The other one, when you do the, um, the collage way, you can just kind of drag and drop pictures in. So which, whatever way is more, you know. Yeah. And, and then uh, really, honestly, don't worry too much about the pictures. I mean, the, really the only person that cares about it is you, you know, yeah. no one else is really going to care. So. Yeah. Yeah, don't spend three hours on it. Spend 10, 15, 20 minutes, and that's good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, 
that this is it. This is all for our call. And, uh, you know, what you do from now on is kind of up to you. You know, you're kind of, you're on your own and, you know, we've given you the kind of the start of what you need to do. Um, and your goal is to, you know, once you get to Emerald, then, you know, you can start joining our next call, which is going to start right now. So we look forward to seeing you guys on here. Yep.